Can you guys hear me? Yes. 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 Can you guys still hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, Bernard, everybody, thank you so much. Um, I'm already a few minutes late. I was trying to get in and I had some Windows restart issues uh, and, and that took a few minutes. Uh, today, I'm hoping um, that I would walk you through um, a couple of slides that Kaushik and I put together for the upcoming event and we'll discuss um, the rest of the logistics around the event and also um, discuss um, what are we doing for the day two. Dahl has also put together some agenda items and we will review that. And I think uh, we'll leave um, the, the rest of the half an hour for uh, the service assurance discussion, which was actually not finished last time. Uh, if that agenda looks okay, I will dive into it and, and start sharing my, my slides and we can review the, uh, the, the flow of the presentations that we are trying to put together for the events. And of course, it's all open to discussion. And uh, the reason I'm bringing to the community is to gather enough feedback so that when we present there, at least we have some voice um, uh, from the community in, in the messages that we are giving out. All good? You find that. Tall, were you able to find the PowerPoint that I shared with you yesterday? Uh, no, I did not see it. Okay, but you found it, right? Where the, um, the reason I'm asking uh, is that I'm not able to share with my Google externally, but if you can, maybe we'll, as a next step, we can share that uh, with the community and we can open it for comments. Um, let me see. Or I, I think Kaushik to do that. Sometimes, I mean, most of the time Kaushik does that. Uh, I, I haven't had a chance to think of it with him today. He's not going to be making today's meeting. Okay, I think I can share it. Do you want me to share my screen? Um, I, I can share my screen because I'm going to skim through this very quickly. Uh, but if you can share with the community and link the link here. Oh, um, that's what you mean. Sorry. Yeah, I got it. I'll, I'll do that right now while we uh, okay. while you present. Okay. Okay, awesome. Can you, can you guys see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Bernard. Uh, and I do really don't like the feature that as the moment you start sharing your screen, you, you, you can't see people anymore. I wish there was a possibility to see both together. So um, the first day uh, of the agenda, as Kandan and everybody else in the, um, in the event planning group was discussing and Tal has been there, uh, we, were, we were thinking that uh, for the broader audience who are actually sitting at the event, we need to give them an introduction and a high level view of what a particular SIG is doing. So, so Kaushik and I um, explored that the first day, we'll keep it pretty high level. I try to give everybody a sense of what SIG architecture's role is, how we have structured our working groups, how each working group is focused on giving some deliverables. Um, and um, the second day, um, um, I would like to have uh, the leads from those working groups to actually come and present some of the work that they have been leading. And any volunteers that we can get for these individual SIG groups to come and present, even if you don't have um, something extremely formal to present, we can, explore ideas with the, with the community here. And like um, I was discussing with Tal yesterday, that could be an opportunity for us to gather comments and to basically uh, ex brainstorm with, with everybody face to face in that room. Uh, so three main things, uh, we'll discuss the working groups. I wanted to discuss some output of the architectural working group, uh, which I have put together. And here's just a couple of slides that I will open to the community to review. Uh, we'll put one slide at the end in which I have drafted a couple, um, all the working groups um, evolutionary path. For example, where this working group is today and how would this eventually lead into um, a vision that, that satisfies the overall architecture of the, um, uh, of the NFU and how it intersects with our North, South, East, West APIs. So maybe that evolution can be captured in one of the looking ahead slides. Um, now I'm going to get into this architecture slide. You probably have seen um, other versions of the slide which were not editable, but this version should be fully editable by the community. And once um, Tal shares that, uh, feel free to um, feel free to comment on any interface or any um, icon 
what makes sense to you ask questions. I think we'll go through the iterations of improving this diagram that reflects the very abstract high level view of NEPHEW, how it intersects with the existing uh, automation <clears throat> ecosystem. And maybe it's different for different people. Uh, and we will incorporate that view to make it more um, relevant to the, to the community's uh, representation of NEPHEW and how it intersects with existing brownfield. If you want to expand on the GitOps DevOps block, uh, feel free to edit the diagram uh, and we can continue to, I can also do like one ad hoc session uh, to review any changes that you would like to make the diagram to make it more generalized. Uh, one thing that I would like to keep in mind is that this is extremely high level. I haven't gone into the details of the interfaces. This is for people who are, who are not even familiar with what the project nephew is and where does it even sit in the world? Like uh, a couple of people from my own organization, I was working with um, some of the nephew related POCs and um, I was getting some funds approved. And during that process, of my VPs asked, uh, we already have a service orchestration, we already have Netflix slicing, uh, and we already have Kubernetes from different providers, including, including Google. What is it that Nephew does? And for me to be able to give them an answer that it's extension of Kubernetes, it's going to augment the existing automation framework that is done for Netflix slicing and service orchestration by adding itself in a layer. Um, that layer is currently, as I understand, and I presume is filled by a lot of vendors proprietary tooling that manages the network function level um, deployment and lifecycle management. Um, and that's where it fits today. But tomorrow, maybe the, the product or the project both evolves in a way that uh, starts to do some of the things that are done in service orchestration and maybe this nephew icon um, would be represented elsewhere too. Uh, so on a very high level, I'll go through this diagram uh, and start getting questions, but I wanted to show you two things. And the other uh, um, diagram... Sana, Sana can, yes. can, you, can I have some comment? I think this diagram confused me a lot. The reason okay. is, uh, the reason is uh, the SOL3 and Kubernetes API and OIO2 Kubernetes API from SMO. The thing is, this SOL5, SOL3, OIO2 is, is Imperative uh, operation uh, is a restful base that you send requests and or acknowledgement or you get the response. And nephew has an indirect uh, the repository based uh, triggering system, CR and you know Git based, and then that's why all the mechanism uh, nephew does. Mm -hmm. I completely, so, completely agree. Yeah, but yes. the reason is uh, even the uh, session. Hope session was here. Session uh, SMO when he's. Uh, brainstorming SMO, he positioning the um, O2, O2 IMS, DMS, uh, the interface southbound of the field when you're talking yes. to Okra. So that's why many okay. confusion here because uh, the Sandeep- We'll, we'll, we'll um, review that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I agree with him. I understand where the O1 and O2 yeah. interfaces go. So to, to address your first confusion, Bernard, you are 100% correct. Kubernetes yeah, APIs, yes are in no way sole three APIs. And we can change that tag, we can remove that. But, but I wanted to explain you the purpose of why this is here. Uh, basically, we wanted to show the relative positioning of nephew and sole three APIs does not mean that we are implementing the sole three APIs. Maybe there's a better way to, um, to use that tag, but explain that it's going to be the Kubernetes APIs performing the function of Sol3. So if you open the Sol3 APIs, what does it say? It actually drives this through user stories. Um, it's instantiate a Netflix service, terminate a Netflix service, delete a Netflix service, lifecycle management yeah. Netflix service, sorry, network function, all network function, uh, I missed that. Uh, yeah. So that one, goes... one comment the before, I'm sorry, one comment before. Using the, instead of using 01 or two, I think the uh, basically uh, the, Sandeep and other uh, Alex just mentioned about we pass, uh, we means uh, let's say Orient, pass intent into uh, nephew. Okay, that is just some, uh, the, there's a, you know, GitHub based, we pass the old system and we provide the CR. So it's, it's different from O1, O2 uh, Kubernetes API. So that's why if you, someone see this diagram, it's very confusing. And also if Orient, uh, Stashu uh, providing his diagram is different, and Alex's and Sandeep show his diagram, then it will be different. So every diagram has different, uh, you know, caveat and different way of handling. We, we need to. I'm saying yeah, we need to yeah. converge. 
I agree, but not. Okay. You need to convert. Okay. Now, got it. I got your angle, and I completely agree with you. The O1 and Sol3 uh, is a very prescriptive term that, that makes people believe that that's exactly the APIs that we are going to implement. O1 and O2 APIs don't even exist in the standard of ORAN today. We have production deployment of first ORAN in the world. We are very closely working with the ORAN lines. And I can talk to the people from ORAN Alliance on what we have done for O1 and O2. And you're 100% right. Nephew is not going to produce the O1 and O1, O2 APIs in a way that the specs describe. Maybe there'll be Kubernetes APIs performing the function of O1 and O2. And I'm not going into the O1 and O2 APIs details, but <clears throat> on a very high level, what I'm trying to tell you is that I can remove the Sol3 and Sol5 tags completely, and we can replace that with the user journey. And the user journeys would be a big gap of things. Maybe I'll have to write um, instantiate network service, delete network service, lifecycle managed network service, and all those APIs when they're expressed in the K8 APIs are going to be responsible for filling this interface because that's where it's going to interact with the service orchestration. I need those APIs to evolve eventually because myself, we, and many other service providers could be using a service orchestrator. And if I'm not wrong, Bernard, uh, there are a couple of instances of service orchestration, even in DT, but depends on how you operationalize that. But if you, there is a point in your stage of your basically organization when you start to incorporate nephew with the existing ground field, you might want to use those to manage the network function level deployment through your service orchestrator and merge it with the existing ground field. <clears throat> Maybe we don't have to do that. Sorry, give me one second. Yeah, maybe, maybe uh, Sana, I think it's very confusing also. I, I think I will remove all the Sol3 API and so on. Remove all this uh, from the diagram because uh, yeah. uh, at that time, can... I, 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 I'm not sure we're on the same page. And I I can share my vision on how we are using a few internally in some POC. Typically, for example, my service orchestration typically is pushing uh, intent in Git directly, OK? So it's another way also to communicate between service orchestrator on Nephew, for example. We have many ways to do it. You can use yes. Git, you yeah. can use so UI, Eric, your way. So your way can be expressed this way. Exactly. Uh, with our exactly. With service the we push to Git, exactly. That's, that's so, my point too. As long, because we have an indirect, long, indirect connection, yeah. yes. Correct. Exactly. Correct. So yeah. as long as we are able to uh, express, um, as long as we are able to express one diagram that shows different integration models with different POCs, we should arrive at a generic model. Now, I replaced Sol3 completely because it's creating more confusions yeah. than understanding. Um, we can replace those arrows by, by giving it some blocks, and I'll replace the Sol3 word by giving them the user journeys. Now, what does Sol5 mean to me uh, visually? If I look at Sol5, that one word tells me that this is all about network service. And we also have the network slicing yeah, uh, solution operationalized in production today. So I have I, ha I have a first-hand work experience working with Sol5. And honestly speaking, even today, Sol5 doesn't have a very complete list of APIs. So what is eventually happening is that the particular service orchestration has its own northbound APIs, which are richer than Sol5. So the interface, we still call it Sol5, just because it's easier to reference, oh, which interface APIs are we talking about? But in reality, we are using all the service orchestration product APIs because we instantiate the network service, create network service, lifecycle managed network service. All of them came um, well before Sol3 was even mature or materialized. Hmm. Uh, it's a way but, of uh, Sana, referencing yeah, the I, interface. I'm, I'm very confused also to see uh, all the C CSMF and SSMF on top of the service orchestration because uh, it's a bit strange for, for, for me because uh, <laughs> for us, the service orchestration is much more as a, a, above this, uh, this function. So I'm a bit surprised the way you describe it in a in Okay, diagram. this service orchestration in reality is basically an SEO. Now, ah, these, ah, are the, ah, okay. these are the product okay. terms, right? The, the, the product okay, terms, okay. right? Ah, okay. uh, so, yeah, that's why yeah. I tried to mention the service orchestra is name is just confusing. But when you put NFP, yeah. it's a very it's confusing term. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Right. So because there's end to end ah. service orchestration and the network resource ah. service orchestration, that's why yeah. once you put NFP, it's clear. 
And yeah, yeah anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I agree. <laughs> okay. So okay. with that might have uh, reduced, and, and the purpose of this discussion is to ensure that this is fixed. So um, I removed those two, um, uh, Sol3 and O2 completely here, uh, but I do want to describe these arrows. So maybe a very uh, small model of describing the interface of those arrows and showing what kind of APIs would exist here would be to put a color. And with that color, I can insert a block and show that not all the user journeys, user stories, but maybe some, so that's the scope of the network function, right? And this is the scope of a network service. And this is how NFU is going to intersect north, south, east, west. And maybe a couple of user stories on those interfaces as well. And I'm going to open the document for comments. And anything that you want to insert, put the comment. And we need to do one more um, session to come together, uh, review this together, and, and um, uh, edit the things that we should edit. And uh, I'm also going to explain what's inside this blog. And this is also open to comments and questions because I received something from Eric. Uh, Tall might have views. Um, and l let's make sure that this is describing a, a good view of what the product or the project nephew is in, in the current state of things. Eventually, it can evolve to become service orchestrator or NFPO or even network slicing. Let's not go there. This is an evolutionary view, and this can change. But today, what it can do for us. So to me, uh, we are creating operators and CRDs, uh, which I showed in this particular block. And they are three arrows going down from them on a very high level. People who have not understood the role of nephew can get to see what is the responsibilities of those operators in CRDs that the community is producing? We don't deploy infrastructure. We configure infrastructure. So I have this configuration mm, icon with that. Sana, 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 I yeah. need to be clear on that because for R1, uh, we are deploying infrastructure. So uh... Go ahead, Bernard. I missed your last audio. This is Eric. But I just, I, I'm just telling that in, in, in Nephew R, R1, we are deploying infrastructure using uh, kind and CAPI. So uh, today it's not only deploying CNF. No, no, no. We are deploying, uh, are we installing Kubernetes on bare metal? No, we are deploying cluster, Kubernetes kind cluster. Deploying uh, using clusters, Capi right? Operator. Deploying clusters on already deployed Kubernetes. Uh, no, 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 no. We are deploying Kubernetes cluster. We're deploying Kubernetes cluster. So I'm saying the cluster level work we are doing, the preparation of the network function level work we are doing. We are not, so in a, in a, in a, in a private cloud environment, we are not bringing a bare metal up server to Nephium. Yes, but. Uh... So I, I, we are deploying I the clusters, I... configuration of the clusters. We are yeah. doing the SRIO VDPDK configurations. We are preparing yeah, that yeah. cluster for an incoming workload. We are not bringing a bare metal server up and installing Kubernetes on it. Okay, like, oh, yeah. okay for that. Okay. that right? Yes. Yes. So yeah. maybe there is a better way of um, explaining that. But our role starts when the cluster uh, when the Kubernetes environment is available, but now we have to configure that environment for our use for a given network function in target. So we have network function in mind, say for example, UPS. And now I want to provision this particular environment to match the requirements of, an, of a targeted network function, which could be UPS. So how many clusters do I need? How many networks do I need? How do I configure the SRIO, VDP, DK, CPU, pinning, huge bit? All that configuration is a scope of nephew. And that scope is in context of the network function that we are going to deploy. So are we agreeing on, on that um, aspect of the uh, infrastructure? How do uh, I say it? Not, not fully, not fully, Sana, because today, uh, I'm sorry, but in uh, release <laughs> one, <laughs> we are able to deploy. We in, in, in included uh, a CAPI operator to deploy some clusters. No, clusters we can deploy. Cluster is a soft entity. Um, we're deploying yeah. and configuring the Kubernetes clusters and managing and the configurations of the clusters to onboard the incoming NF. Yeah. M making it very careful uh, that a lot of people uh, have been getting confused that maybe it's going to do everything bare metal up. Uh, which yeah, is I agree. I agree. Focus, I agree. Tana, right? But we just we just need to be clear. I mean. Yeah, being very. Um, 
uh, careful with the choice of words, right? And yeah. everything we do on a given cloud environment, uh, we do in the context of the network function that is an intent of deployment for, for a given uh, scope of work. Uh, then we deploy a CNF. And I intentionally put CNF, not NF, because it's always going to be a containerized uh, network function. And then oh. we configure uh, the uh, network function. I, I, sorry, sorry, Sana, once again, why, 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 why our target is only CNF? I, I disagree with that. Huh? With Nephew, I think at the end of the day, we should be able to deploy uh, maybe a configure VNF and so on. We are, we are not uh, linked to CNF for as far as I understand. Um, I, see, I see that we will always be working on Kubernetes environment. So VNF would come with other kind of environment. Is there an appetite or a way for us to eventually orchestrate the OpenStack based deployments or the VM based deployment? I haven't seen that. Not, not today, so, not today, not today. But there are some maybe. tools to do it. We there are some tools where we can use Kubernetes-based uh, model to be able to deploy some uh, VM-based. Huh? Uh, we, can... Maybe I can try to uh, yes to clean this up a bit. Yeah. I I think from from Sig 2s perspective, we're allowing both, right? So yeah. you know there are two scenarios where you already have a catalog of sites, pre-existing <laughs> sites and you're just using them but you know we have all these subsystems to provision sites and for example if you're using public cloud obviously you're requesting a, a cluster to be created for you right and if you can do that declaratively or non-declaratively it can interact with those systems and you know some uh even bare metal support right if you're using red hat acm which is also declarative you could create the cluster there so we're not forbidding it you know, Nephew could work with pre-provision clusters, or it could interact with a system that provisions this. And in fact, it's kind of strange, but we mostly right now do the second one, even though I, I think it's going to be the, the rare uh, use case. But the reason we're doing this because we don't have bare metal, right? We, for testing yeah. purposes, we do yeah. have to provision our own clusters, which we do on virtual machines, right? For for testing purposes so people can download and start to use it. But but that's the opposite probably of what it's going to be in the real world where you know everybody here is correct. Uh, you usually have the sites already prepared with some sort of infrastructure management and uh, Kubernetes is probably even already there. Although mm. even with that, it's a little bit complicated because we have, we have requirements for Kubernetes too that come from network functions that we want to handle. So we have a, a task force right now called NF to infra and uh, to that we're dealing with it. So the, the devil is in the details here, but we're we're um, we're not forbidding either approach, right? Uh, and both of them are are supported in a way. Although provisioning clusters is of course a huge huge. You know there there are so many ways to do it, and um, and Capi, which is the cluster API, is extremely limited. <laughs> it will not solve the bare metal use cases. Uh, those things are out of scope. For Nephew to handle, but Nephew should be able to interface with those systems. Yeah, but if I could say something, I just be careful, right? Because you're messaging to a community, and and if if you're going to try to make the statement that says uh, Nephew is more than just uh, you know development of or deployment of workloads on Kubernetes clusters, then uh, you know. You're, you 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 very well may lose focus of what, and you may not be able to do what you do very well, right? And so I I, agree I would be very yeah. careful. I, I would be very, I'd be very careful. careful. Yeah, so yeah. right, right, right. And you know, I was not expecting that this particular um, part of the diagram would have any confusions because that's something that me and Kandan has been presenting to our sales pitch when we went to Amazon, when we went to other service providers to do some of those works. We are in a very abstract way. Um, telling that the operators and CRDs are actually going to work in three pools. One is infrastructure configuration, one is network function deployment, one is network function configuration. Now, the terminology can have different meanings for different people. And at the end of the day, I think after all that discussion, we are all aligned that that's exactly what's happening. Now, what does deploying <clears throat> mean to you? Maybe that means something different to you. What does provisioning and configuration of the clusters mean to you? Maybe that means something else to me. Sure. But we are kind of aligned on the scope of network function and all the pre-work around that and on the focus of the network function and, and eventual configuration and lifecycle management all falls under 
the current scope of Nephium at the moment. So let me let, let me try to put it in a different way that that doesn't mm. alarm anybody. Um, right. So a lot of these diagrams are top down, right? We always have the cloud and the infrastructure at the bottom, but we we have been talking about east west integrations as well. So think about site management as an east west integration, right? It's not that Nephio is on top of it and managing it. I think that's what's alarming. When you look right. at something, a diagram like this, and think, oh, Nefio is actually managing the infrastructure, people get very, very alarmed. <laughs> so yeah. it's an easy yeah, to but, 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 but just hold on, Sana, just, just to be clear, we, because I, I just want to avoid confusion. Today, in release one, we did some uh, demonstration. And I, as you said, Tal, I fully agree with you. It's one case, uh, the real case, where we deploy uh, Kubernetes cluster because they should be deployed previously. And we should be able just to, just to configure them within the few management. But we have to be careful about what we provided in release one, because maybe as you explained, it was just uh, to demonstrate the capability of Nephew to do it, but that should not be, let's say, the, the, the normal usage of, uh, of Nephew. But we just need to be clear on the way we communicate. And, on, on, and also on the way, uh, uh, about what is available in release one today. Correct, Eric. Short term scope just, of just, Nephew. Just, just, we should be on the same page. I think we are, but we are just to be careful about the way we communicate. That's all. Then that's that, yeah, absolutely right. And uh, we are also not going to, uh, like I said, any vision of the diagram uh, that presents the intersection with the rest of the components is evolutionary in nature, which means that because the natural and organic growth of the project and the community can drive maybe the east-west side way more mm -hmm. than our north-south side, right? How we are using Nephew is going to drive that. So this is changing. But what the current mo mode looks like, how some people can actually put this together and understand, oh, that's where Nephew fits, is going to be at least some work at the stage that we can show to the community. So for example, if someone comes with the own app background, maybe they can say, oh, that's the layer which is interacting and replacing the VNF manager kind of a role. To me, this is a generic VNF manager today. I'm not diminishing the role of Nephew, but to me in a very short term reality, if it successfully does that and it can accomplish that, I think that's a huge success in, in, its, in its form. Uh, we were not able to use Kubernetes based um, APIs, all of it, uh, for containerized epic functions deployment in the past. Uh, we were using some custom tooling from custom vendors, and um, we probably did not need a VNS manager when we started working with Kubernetes, but that they, they existed. They are still there. Uh, one successful uh, adoption of Nephew could be replacing that layer completely, and I'm very strong on that because that would enable Kubernetes to become a generic CNS manager and Nephew is actually allowing us to do that. Uh, we, then how does we fit in the rest of the world? If that happens in the short term, uh, maybe the service orchestrators and the network licensings, if they are still on the ground, how would Nephew eventually intersect with that? So for example, today, if I replace all my VNF managers and I'm working with the GitOps and DevOps tooling and I'm trying to manage all my infrastructure and network function deployments and onboarding to the cloud through Nephew, I would still need a mechanism for the existing um, NFCO or the service orchestration level functions to interact with that resource centric layer. And how do we enable them to talk to Nephew would be through those APIs. And that could be a discussion. Uh, which we can drive uh, in, 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 that, in that exercise. So uh, I'm still um, waiting for more questions and comments. And I saw some very good comments on the chat as well. And um, we can actually uh, incorporate every comment and make sure that this diagram is not confusing. Uh, it's basically a good point of uh, discussion and communication and brainstorming our ideas together. Even in the even in the uh, event, if we present that, I'm expecting there'll be lots of questions, um, lots of comments, and we need to make sure that those questions and those comments are handled because that's what we will use to understand how the community thinks and what is basically uh, the thought process of people in the room who are trying to see nephew for the first time. 
Um, the other parts that I did want to bring to you were the three things, the APIs, the CRDs, the SDKs, and whatever we need to represent here as icons. Maybe Tall, I wanted you to take a look at this as well. Um, so people in the room who don't know what is coming out of the nephew code that I can use today to basically start using for my network functions and infrastructure provisioning, in what form is the code supplementing uh, my existing Kubernetes deployment that I can use right away. So for example, these multicolor cloud underneath shows different types of cloud environments, but I kept the Kubernetes as a common denominator. Short term, again, I'm not putting OpenStack and all other variants in this because for the short term, we are interacting with Kubernetes APIs a lot. So maybe yeah. what is it that we use from Nephew project open source code that enables me to do something with this today? Um, so, Tall, do you have any comments on that? Um, or, of course, Bernard, <laughs> Eric, everybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just maybe, I, okay, I'm go not, ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I just want to say maybe in a, in a few, maybe what is missing today, or maybe that is not understood by the ecosystem, is also the capability to manage packages, to uh, specialize them, and to. We are using the GitOps approach also, I think, and we, we should maybe put more. Um, more details on that because today it's not very clear in this diagram how we are using this kind of GitOps approach uh, with Nephew. And that's for me, for me also is that something very new uh, globally, and maybe we need to uh, to show uh, in in the building blocks of Nephew that we are also uh, using some uh, some capability to manage these packages on the way to do it. That is very powerful. And it doesn't appear in this uh, global picture today. It's not very so, Eric, easy what to would explain. be a good way? What would be a good way to describe that? Um, <laughs> if this diagram is shared with you, like in a super, super high level, uh, is there a way that you can expand on the GitOps and DevOps block? Yeah, we and the interaction between that, right? The interaction between that, describe that in a little bit more detail, and that can capture the flow that is in your mind from nephew. <laughs> Might we not also try to simply list the questions, the open issues, which we definitely would like to address over the time, not sort of trying to convey the message that we already have the perfect picture already in mind, but saying, yes, there is going to be a northbound interface to the service orchestration part. We need to find out sort of via which mechanisms we need to establish that. We need to take care of the artifacts when managing the life cycle. So we could have sort of different elements and then have sort of the questions which we need to address in that context. Right. So once we, that's a very good idea, Bernard, to drive the discussion forward. Uh, so once uh, Tall shares this diagram, um, maybe I'm looking for inputs to, uh, to gather more questions on each interface and see how do we address those particular questions and m make, make this more reflective of everyone's thought process. And, and um, <clears throat> we collect the old question yeah. as Bonat said, we're going to uh, really discuss about this because, right, um, you know, right. there's a lot of issue with uh, this diagram. If you look at really detail, Soldier 5 API, as soon as you introduce Soldier 5, you're talking about Soldier 1 modeling and also asynchronous and acknowledgement, all the, uh, the reverse you know, direction for granting, all the complication coming into this picture. So, and also, uh, Subhashi mentioned about the, how at the uh, O2. Uh, FM, PM, and that's the reverse traction and coming in. Who's going to collect? How are you going to collect? And then since we are using GitHub based indirect mechanism, but Nephew wants talking back to SMO, what's the uh, communication? That's why in this diagram, talking one direction, uh, that's simplified, but there are many hidden <laughs> the function. Uh, somebody using, look at this and uh, probably say that. But anyway, uh, so this yes. is the question yes. probably we can. Uh, yeah, can, this is can the same this. question. This is the same question that Bernard had on Soul 003. So the arrow with the Soul 005 uh, does not, okay. Soul 005 is not touching Nephew at all at the moment. I not know, at know. all, yeah. right? It exists in the industry. If you work in ONAP, if you work in other industry I mean, um, um, efforts, you see how 3GPP automation APIs communicate with the Etsy APIs and how that communication happens. There is an agreement in the industry that they interact on Sol 005. Now, I also gave you the reality that I have the production deployment of these 
things and 12005 is not sufficient, which means that we are using our own APIs. And what does 12005 say? Says that's the scope of network service. Now, again, like I've removed 12003 and I'm going to replace that with the comments from people and ensure that we have some user journeys listing those arrows. Uh, we can do the exact same thing for 12005 and that would be a more realistic capture uh, of, 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 the, of the reality of those APIs. Um, ideally, I think only 20% of Sol005 APIs are there today that are actually capable of helping you create an EMBB network size from an orchestrator. The rest of the 80% are coming from maybe that particular deployment of the orchestrator, which has its own REST-based APIs. So we are, to some extent, we could be compliant with the Sol005 because if you are using Tosca, maybe that's you are um, to some degree compliant to the Etsy recommendations, but to a large extent, the schema, the resource modeling within those APIs, it's all REST-based and it's all proprietary. Um, no, nobody's actually following SOL005 either. So if that helps, I can remove SOL005 as well. And just like what we have discussed and brainstormed, we can replace that with the user journeys as well. Maybe you're right. Maybe people are not complying and following the SOL001 and packaging formats and Tosca at all. Um, how, how do we, if Soul 005 is making it look prescriptive, uh, that was not the intent. It was showing the scope of the interface, but it's not doing that for it because somehow the moment we put the standard interface name, uh, people get to those conclusions and, and that could be confusing. So we'll actually replace all these arrows with the user journeys. And then however we evolve, and implementation level details of those user journeys cannot be prescribed. That would leave it open to imagination, right? However, that interface evolves eventually. Would that address your concern? Yeah, yes. And I know, yes. right? So we should do that. I think that would help us. And maybe we don't touch Etsy at all, uh, which because of because it's very prescriptive. Uh, the APIs, their uh, their resource modeling, their packaging requirements, it's all very prescriptive and people can get confused that maybe Nephew is attempting to produce that, which I don't see any intention or requirement for that. So uh, we'll replace that with user journeys. Um, anything um, else? So I, I have my hand up, but I know you can't see. I can't um, see. Tall, please go ahead. Yeah, so I, I, I do think this, so this diagram is confusing in two different ways. <laughs> One, that it involves the Etsy hierarchy from top to bottom, the pyramid. And the other, that it, I think it kind of mixes operational with uh, architectural aspects of Nephew, right? Because Nephew is here presented as another layer. And to an extent, from Etsy's perspective, yes, it's, the, it's a lower layer of orchestration. But Nephew does not use Etsy concepts, right? So I, just like we put GitOps on the side here, so I'm digging into a point I made earlier that I don't think the Kubernetes clusters should be under. I think they should maybe move to the right here as a <laughs> east, if you will, uh, uh, configuration because everything you wrote down there, SDKs, CRDs, they're actually living below, right? Nephio does what I like to call side-by-side -side orchestration rather than top-down orchestration. So technically we do have a management cluster that is on top of the workload clusters but everything that you put in here is not uh, part of what the management cluster does, right? So operationally, yes, the management cluster does do the kind of get ops side of things for us, but it is, you know, the critical issue is, you know, at Google, at least the management cluster doesn't even talk to the workload clusters. They're completely peers, <laughs> right? They, they all communicate together via uh, Git, which I know is not uh, something that, you know, all clouds do but that's how the, the Google yeah. GDC works, right? So I, I would put the, those clusters on the right rather than on the bottom. And to show that Nephio works side by side with Kubernetes, it's not something, it's not a layer on top of Kubernetes that filters, filters Kubernetes for you in, in any meaningful way. It just fills in various gaps in Kubernetes to make it easier to work with, with some of these concepts, right? Um, I think doing that would maybe clarify this diagram. I don't know, clarify, but at least not be as confusing as it is right now. 
Yeah, Ta, one, uh, I think I, I second some, uh, second that some of them uh, because originally when I first time saw Nephew, we saw Nephew is under below uh, NFPO or SMO. We feel that way. And because they, they, we hope that we think they are handling about CNF and then others. But later on, uh, Nephew, they introducing you know, the management cluster. And then now we're talking about, Nephew talking about some of the uh, network service level and then affinity, you know, which, which workload cluster they're going to distribute to. They control that one. That's a little conflict, not the conflict, the uh, stepping uh, on the NFU area. That's why bring down in under the NFU, yeah, as you, you, as you said, it's confusing. So, <laughs> so NFU is I, I kind of a, I think you're right. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I do yeah. think it's eating into a little bit of the NFU responsibilities. Uh, which is a good thing because it makes them easier. But the issue is not Nephew. The issue is Kubernetes. Kubernetes is yeah. not a Vim, right? Kubernetes right. is not something that would provision things. It is itself an orchestrator. So when you're embracing Kubernetes, and this has nothing to do with Nephew, if you're using Kubernetes and you're using it correctly, <laughs> then um, then already the NFEO has to do much less work. It doesn't have to do else complete LCM provisioning VMs and things like that, right? Nephew doesn't have VMs. <laughs> Nephew is a completely declarative interface. So just, yep. sorry, not Nephew, Kubernetes. Yep. So just by using <laughs> Kubernetes, the NFPO becomes a little bit more lightweight. Um, but yeah, that's not right. something we're showing in this diagram because again, it's confusing when you use the Etsy model because Kubernetes kind of ruins parts of that model. Right, Kubernetes destroys and challenges the Etsy model and all I agree with you. So this diagram is very similar to the diagram that I have worked on with Kandan and uh, it's a part of the charter. So maybe we have a discussion with Kandan and review that does this diagram still reflect the nephew scope in the broader industry? Not everyone in the industry knows nephew as is. And what we are discussing here is that we are going a lot in detail into the mechanics of this particular layer itself. But what the intent of this diagram in the beginning was that in the broader industry, where the rest of the factory is going around network sizing, a whole 3GPP standard and a model and lots of production deployments are happening in the world and where lots of service orchestrations are operationalized and people are working on the SMOs and things like that. In that broader sense of things, how would they see with the existing ground field where Nephew is? And 99% of the people tall in the world are actually looking at the in, 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 uh, reference implementation, which is built top down. Look at 3GPP, look at ONAP, and look at Etsy. I'm not saying that they're right. I'm saying that that's the model of interpretation which has existed in a very large spectrum of the community. Now, there are two ways to address that. I'm not saying that that's right or wrong. I'm saying it's a, it's a way to show them with, with the language that they know and something that they have seen before to show where Nephew is, and that would help them understand this right away. Now, what we can do as an alternative exercise is that um, Tall or Eric and you guys bring one more diagram and we could replace those parts eventually to reflect how would our North, South, East, West APIs communicate with the rest of the things. I would love to see your view. I'm just hearing that in words, but I think um, yeah, I'll, let's I'll do it attempt live to draw before, I'll share before, it before I... the event so we can converge on something and we can have of an extremely high level view. It doesn't have to have the design level details in it um, so that we can explain to, to basically a broader community on how we are seeing the evolution. And I would love to discuss this diagram once with Kandan as well, just to see that if it's aligned with the existing charter and explaining a little bit more, is there anything wrong with that to present as is, or is it something that we could completely remove and replace? And this is not about Nephew's internal design either. It is about how Nephew intersects with the rest of the world. Um, and and that's, that's what we need to be very focused on at the moment. The cloud not at the bottom, the cloud on the right, and Nephew on the left, we can still do that. I, mean, it's, I, I don't see a problem doing that. But uh, how would the NFEO and SMO interact with the cloud? If you look at the SMO diagrams, they put the cloud at the bottom as well. Uh, we still need to position the rest of the things in a way that finds this interfaces to communicate with those things. But maybe there is a way. Uh, give it a go, Kanda, um, um, Tall. Maybe we come up with something better, and and maybe that's more reflective of the current state of things. So this is the first attempt. It's open for comments, open for questions, and open for edit. This every um, block uh, within that is editable, so you can change icons, replace icons, shift around things, remove, move around the boxes. If 
uh, if Eric, you feel like create another version of the diagram, if you feel that we can expand on the GitOps and DevOps a little bit and expand on this interface for your POC, I think that would be an excellent extension of this view as well. And we'll wait for some comments on, on all these interfaces and we'll come up with a list of um, user stories that describes these interfaces because that exercise will actually help us build a roadmap for those APIs, uh, which we can then incrementally incorporate into our planning. When, which API is getting getting delivered. Maybe that will be an incremental roadmap for us to, to build after that exercise. Agreed, agreed, Kandan? I'm um, sorry, Paul. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm doing it now. It might be ready before the, uh, we're done, but I know, uh, uh, I know you can't see the uh, hands up. Um, okay. We, we have can, another uh, item on please, the agenda. Please moderate I that. that. I can't really see the hand. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying, yeah. <laughs> Anyone's hands raised? Please go ahead, ask oh, questions. Yeah. I, I'm not Sandeep, able to see the hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Sandeep from Samsung. Yeah, I mean, I think you already touched upon the point that when you're describing that, we need to tell people what nephew <laughs> is giving to you and what you can reuse uh, from the nephew. Like, for example, uh, I mean, you can describe better, but we can say, like, can give an answer that we are building a lot of uh, KBT function, pipelines, controllers which can, people can use for their different types of use cases. Maybe that can be an answer. Because generally when people see, right, they see that configsing is already existing, KBD package already existing, GitHub, GitOps are already existing. So we, we know that we're we are stitching all of them, all of them and trying to bring up some sort of a solution out of it for, to, to orchestrate or to deploy our NFs. So maybe if we can, I don't know whether you can, how do you put this, kind of answer in this diagram, but I think somewhere we have to put it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, and I think... maybe Sana, yeah, I, I tried to, to, to draw a diagram uh, to explain this kind of stuff. I can share with you, but uh, I, will, I will send you after the meeting because uh, I'm not uh, um, capable to do it now, but I can share what I, I propose to, to you, Sana. You, I just wanted to, 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 to present this high level uh, vision of Nefio on the uh, with some function and so on. I, I will share with you uh, after the meeting. It's yeah. it's not perfect, uh, but, but it's insert, just a way to... Yeah. yeah, Eric, I remember your diagram. Uh, insert yeah. that in one of the slide decks. And yeah, I know okay. your diagram is really focused on this layer. Your yeah, diagram sure, sure, doesn't sure. include this part, right? No, yeah, too, so exactly, we can review... Exactly. Right, right. So we can review that diagram, the one that you yeah. showed, and then we can extract okay. something from that to fit in here. Exactly. Right. On medical, so, oh. yeah, yeah, just, just maybe, uh, Sana, maybe the, something I'm not sure we, we, we discussed that, but I think that could be great for, uh, for the event is also to demonstrate, uh, uh, what is, uh, for, for a CNF vendor, uh, how we can benefit from, uh, from Nephew and how should he package his uh, network function to be, uh, 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 usable by Nephew. And I think, uh, I don't know if we have so, someone to explain that during the, the event. I think that, sh that should be very useful. Yeah, the network and function vendors to... can yeah, benefit yeah. from their field. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. essentially, my personal feeling is that uh, they will not benefit from their fear. And there are reasons that I believe in. Uh, and of course, that's the point that we should bring up. Maybe there should be a dedicated panel to the network function vendors and get their views on how are they going to use Nephew because they won't use Nephew. It's just not aligned with the existing commercial model. Eric, have you read the document that we published? Orange was a big part of publishing that document, the NGMN manifesto. Yeah, 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 sure, 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 yeah. I, I, right? I you, and you know, there are yeah. things about Project Silva and there are things that we would like to change with the network function vendors. And there's so many open questions. And all those open questions are actually the enabling factors which can actually enable the network function vendors to adopt some of uh, the, nephew principles but it, it's a very slow momentum and and a, and a discussion dedicated to network function vendors in the event uh, i think would be a very good idea uh, tall maybe we can take it back to kandan and see if we can do that okay right and there is also one more diagram and people who are working on the oran right now are welcome to put comments and welcome to edit this diagram because uh, we do need to have a 
with extremely, extremely high level view with the SMO and show that what are the components of the SMO where nephew could potentially play a role. Uh, again, the prescriptive detail of the O1 and O2 doesn't mean that nephew is producing the O1 or O2 APIs, but it means that it's going to be producing APIs that replaces the function and existing scope of the O1 and O2, which can also be replaced by user stories. So this diagram is also open for questions and comments. And um, we couldn't get to the service assurance part because we spent more time on, on, on discussing that. Um, I do want some discussion on the first day around our high level understanding of the Nephew scope and how does that fit with the rest of the ecosystem. And one looking forward um, slide for uh, the various working groups evolutionary path. Eventually what this working group is going to be producing uh, in the context of not just R1 and R2, they're just um, placeholders, but the long-term view of this working group on what that is producing, it's something also open for comments if you guys have good ideas uh, of the working groups. Uh, insert some, 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 some points here, and I think we will need one more session to discuss together and explore that. Uh, my hope was that on day two, we gather volunteers who can actually go through the deeper dives of these um, working groups discussions. Uh, uh, Tall, I would suggest maybe one discussion on ORAN and one on the service assurance, uh, where we have made some good progress, would be would be a good time, um, would be good use of time the second day and deeper dives on that. And we'll find volunteers from the community to do that. I, I think service assurance is already well covered. You guys are working on it. Um, maybe someone can present and we'll find someone for ORAN as well, because that's a very interesting working group for um, for, for, for a lot of people who would be in the room that day. Hey, Sana, so there's already, I mean, you know, the, the, uh, the OAI folks are doing some of the RAND stuff already. So that might be, you know, the person. Excellent. To, excellent. To I don't know if they are here. That, right? Okay. Um, well, maybe yeah, they're excellent to, to, to basically come and give a deeper dive on this, this, this working group. Uh, and we can we can structure that as well. And uh, Tal, I'm also looking for an opportunity to basically find additional volunteers who can sign up for these working groups because currently, if you look at the this is the this is the link for the working groups. Uh, if you look at that, um, we haven't had um, a very strong representation of volunteers on those groups because we are repeating the same people um, again. Uh, maybe in that discussion, uh, the day one discussion, we'll find more volunteers to basically work on these working groups and lead some of the work uh, um, alongside. So looking forward to more more people actually joining these. these. Yeah, for working group four, it's Sandeep, I can, I can see, sure. Um, we have a lot of discussions on SDK developments for an FPO, so I can okay. work. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's a good idea. But uh, what me and Kaushik felt is that initial purpose of the working group four in this SIG wasn't the SDK development. I think we were more focused on the UI and experience on how do we onboard a network function and what is the end user experience on that. So we were more focused on the, uh, on the not bound side of that integration element. Now it got extremely focused on the SDK development. I think that working group is hijacked into SIG automation. Um, Tal, have you have you added that um, SDK development working group under automation? Is that going to be covered with that? Um, well, I, I, I so <laughs> I, I wasn't present in the meeting where we decided on the four working groups. I'm a little confused about how they're divided up. Um, it seems to have happened rather quickly. Um, I can say I discussed with Bernard, uh, you know, work group one to really take over modeling for, for Nephew. Uh, so the, the issue of vendor onboarding, you know, we put it as user experience, but who is the user here? Are we talking about both vendors as users and telcos as users? I, I, I'm a little bit confused about work group four, yeah, the telcos are the users. Know. Telcos, telcos are the users. Yeah. Because okay, any product telcos are for... the users, then why are we putting vendor onboarding there? I'm not very clear. 
which is which where is vendor onboarding well helm and operators <laughs> from from uh sig 2's perspective is all about onboarding vendors right that's the kind of implementation detail um uh, helm so, support so, so do you know what do we do with helm charts in 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 telus today i don't know about the other operators we are receiving helm charts as is from a vendor and then the rest of the things we do ourselves so we are managing now we are not designing the helm charts but we are responsible for deploying the helm charts with all in house tooling with all in house templates no vendors involved in that process so we write toscas for that we write any crds required for that we work with the infrastructure directly we have red hat openshift for example so to me the ui and experience is an experience that the operators actually describe and when i was publishing the document all the ngm and cloud native manifesto about 10 different operators were actually using a common voice that they would like to take the ownership of the devops into their own organization so if somehow yeah. vendors are still stuck doing it it's because it's an um, interim period like uh, telcos want to do that telcos are not fully equipped with the skill set that's why vendors are coming and helping them and vendors are making money with that so maybe they're keeping some of that work to themselves to drive professional services but there was a common consensus that operators should be driving the network function onboarding to the cloud managing it and making it self serve for them yeah so, i so that's i guess that my only issue is the name here i uh, i i understand the scope of work group 4 so you mm -hmm. know tasca and helm are i would say northbound and southbound integrations yes. uh, but right. we can call it user experience but i i don't think that's a user experience that's kind of implementation details that, that, that's my problem with the name of the work group but i think it's pretty clear sandeep, sandeep is uh, leading it i think very properly here so a big big shout out to sandeep to really it's the only work group right now uh, of these four that is uh, making uh, real progress there's weekly meetings and we like to say and taken over by the operator ck but i don't see it as being taken over i think it's exactly in the and the scope of what this work group is supposed to do right it's written right here uh, operators right. and helm so i think i think this work group is working correctly i just am confused by its name uh the other work groups i haven't made any progress yet right except maybe work group 1 uh myself and bernard have been talking about models so i have some homework to consolidate all of uh the existing models that i would say are emergent from uh work group, from sig2 put them in a, a kind of document with a topology for it to see all the different types and allow work group 1 to really own modeling for uh for all of nafio right um, so so, so tall yeah. you mentioned the working group 1's role to be only focused on modeling which is what is of course a part of scope but when me and kaushik uh, were sitting together no, only, our work yeah. of course the the uh, working group 1's outcome was also supposed to work with the orchestration ecosystem standards products and open source projects interaction because a lot of time we are communicating with oran we are communicating with ona well, that's so work group 2 you see that, put yeah. oran under work group 2 so so i think the work group organization is a little bit confusing to me it's not very clear to me right uh, it's some overlapping work in that but the working group one um one of the function of the working group one was also to produce diagrams like the ones that i discussed with you produce them agree with the community and publish them so that we have some i scoping of nephew in the broader ecosystem of the uh, of, of the uh, of the standards and in industry was also one of the mandate of working group 1 yeah uh, by the way i know we're out of time but i already created Thanks. my slide i'll share the link again in the chat and i just created a new slide <laughs> with my version i call it a tall okay. version it's slide number 5 in the deck so you can see it okay, in the chat perfect. i just shared it should we yeah. should we resume the discussion on the next sig meeting um and and review your diagram as well tall uh sure but okay. i yeah i i know we have the service assurance uh discussion too maybe maybe until the summit i would like to humbly suggest that we have two meetings per week again because we just have so much to cover and organize before the summit and we're obviously not aligned on uh exactly what we want to present there so um Yeah, maybe Let's make sure that, that we have that. Know what Monday and Thursday yeah. if we can make it work. Yeah, what's that try so, for everyone? Where, right? Where? It's Thursday next week is it not this week? Because I think the TSC meetings are this time next week, not tomorrow. Right. 
not not this week, but for next week we can do Monday and Thursday. Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'll fix the calendar and I'll I'll send out the uh the, the note on the Slack channel as well. And Tall, you shared the link as well, right? On 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 with everybody. Uh, I did, yes. And uh, it was a little bit complicated, Sana. So please use the new copy of the link that I sent, and and don't use your document because it's uh we're now using the it's not the same document. It had to be copied. Okay, so your link has everything from my site as well. Yes, all I did was add an additional slide, and it is world commentable everybody can comment i didn't make it okay. world editable because that might be dangerous but okay. if anybody has it specifically wants to edit just send me a request and i will give you uh permission to edit as well. sounds good <clears throat> thank you sounds good thanks everybody uh, thanks. we'll circle back again on the on on, on the monday discussion thank you okay thanks bye take care bye. Bye.